action cameras. A nice way to show an event from a more dynamic angle and perhaps the most popular at the moment action camera moto is uh, Hero by GoPro. This one is coming from Akaso. It's much more budget oriented and named the EK7000 Pro. Let's check it out. Okay, let's start with a few words about the series. The EK7000 by Acaso have three versions so far. The regular, the plus and the pro. And based on logic and common sense, the pro variation is supposed to be the most powerful and the top end solution. And it's time to have a detailed look at its capabilities. It is very important to say that this is not a true 4K action camera and a big part of the footage that you're going to see throughout the video is recorded in full HD because this is what most of the people would use. And also, it's the only resolution that supports image stabilization. If we have to appropriately profile the camera, it is a good full HD capable action cam with electronic image stabilization at a price around 70 US dollars. This is not too expensive, neither is too cheap, knowing that we can get a true 4K action camera with accessories at slightly above $90. I'm quite concerned about the success of this one, but the EK7000 still shows some good qualities. I've always recommended Acaso as a good budget brand to choose. Their cameras are well built, have excellent accessories and performance is just fine. The communication with their support team is considerably better than many other brands and most of their cameras are available for sale at Amazon. There's nothing innovative about their motos and that's the point to give you as much as possible for the price you pay. We start with the packaging. Does it look like something you already know? I bet it does. A good resemblance of GoPro's packaging and another Acaso device which has a lot of useful accessories. To better understand the characteristics and adjust the expectations from the performance, let's have a closer look at the hardware. Main marketing point is the touchscreen. There's an outdated SunPlus chipset inside, which at least is doing a good job with the Full HD. The sensor is OV4689 by Omnivision, which is a 4 megapixel sensor. Neither the processor nor the sensor can support real 4K resolution, so we can easily conclude that the footage that is marked as 4K is interpolated. Not only that, but the higher resolutions are encoded in MJPEG. Most of the devices nowadays, including TVs, computers, smartphones, they all support the H.264 compression, which is a well-established standard for video decoding, because of the good quality at a given bitrate. In the last couple of years, we can see the increase in the popularity of the H.265, which is the newer and more optimized codec, meant to be a successor to the 264. However, because it is not royalty-free, many people doubt it will become as important as the H.264. And the high-efficiency video codec is not supported by this camera, unfortunately. The term we just mentioned, the MJPEG, is a video compression format in which each video frame is compressed separately as a JPEG image. And it sometimes looks rather bad. However, in bright conditions, the output may be even better than 1080p. Just look closely into these two examples. You will notice different levels of sharpness, colors, noise and amount of details. The left side is 1080p, H.264 versus 4K in MJPEG. In general, MJPEG is something that most people would avoid, but I have to admit that on the EK7000 Pro it doesn't look as bad as on other action cameras. Despite that, I can recommend this model as a good full HD action camera and not as a main 4K shooting device. If your target is to have decent 4K native 4K quality, then maybe you should extend your search and I can kindly recommend a lot of true 4K cameras we've tested for you. Budget, that's the key word. It's, it's really an affordable uh, 4K 
action camera coming from a Casso, the name is EK7000 Pro and right now I'm recording the audio and the video both with it. So everything is raw, unedited, you can hear the sound quality, you can see the scenery, uh, full HD at 60 frames per second. For performance, although I can't give it a great rating, maybe except the 1080p which has electronic image stabilization, I think overall the device does a relatively good job at its price tag. The stabilization is alright, nothing too great, but also nothing too bad. As usual, it crops around 10% of the image. Battery performance is nothing exceptional, around 30 minutes of mixed usage, sometimes up to an hour. The menus won't give you many options for correction. The most significant setting is the exposure adjustment. There are a few software filters, which I bet no one will really use. Time-lapse photos and videos as a feature is available. I had some struggles with the video lapse, but the photo lapse was just fine. Speaking of the menus, I have to say a few good words about the navigation. Because of the touchscreen, switching between different modes is quite easy and there also is the possibility to adjust the menus via the hardware buttons and that's something many of us will highly appreciate. A few hacks. The down button opens the settings directly. Being able to change the settings that quickly, well, that's hell of a shortcut. And a long press of the same button starts the Wi-Fi. And yes, there is a smartphone application as well. This time, Akaso used the ready iSmart DV, which is the native Sun Plus smartphone app. Nothing bad, the app works fine, even on Android 9.0, which is still rather new. No freezes, no glitches, but we have to admit that there aren't too many things to do, besides adjusting the resolution, starting recording, making photo, and reviewing some of the already taken photos or videos. If you like the idea of controlling the EK7000 Pro remotely, one more useful accessory to help, this little remote. The best part is that you don't have to go to any menu in order to activate it. Perhaps this is the easiest kind of remote to connect to an action camera. Just keep it within the range of the camera, which is a few meters, and you can shoot at any time. What can we say about the footage? Well, nothing too bad, but nothing too good either. I think it slightly underperforms for a 4K action camera released in 2019 for 70 bucks. It is good that the camera arrives with a lot of accessories and this lets you record from various angles and scenes. There is of course a waterproof case and although I couldn't test it because of the winter, most of these cases never leak. Shoots good at 1080p, the recorded sound quality is also good, it has a touchscreen, convenient grouping of the menus, remote, smartphone app and a bunch of accessories. To highlight the biggest disadvantages, well, it's not a true 4K action camera. Uh, it only has stabilization in Full HD. I do have some remarks about the battery life and slow motion in 720p, it looks pretty bad. Which means that the most significant reason to buy this action cam is the price and the 1080p capabilities. Well, here we are at the end. If you liked the EK7000 Pro and you want to buy it, then do me a favor, use the links from the description below this video. There's going to be a discount code. Uh, also, if you look for something which is native 4K, Acaso have two very exciting models, the V50 Pro and the V50 Elite. Both of them have been reviewed on the channel, so make sure to click somewhere here and you're going to be able to see more details. Uh, I'm Michael. I've been honored to have you around for the last few minutes. It's been a great pleasure. Hopefully the same for you. Let me know how you feel about this video. Make sure to be... <laughs> and I'll see you soon. Bye!